We are now reaching the final topic for the course. So far, we have learned about many design patterns and also many design principles. But notice that coming up with the design and also provide an implementation to it is only a good start. In order to really complete the design activity that you are trying to undergo, you really have to justify or even prove its correctness. So coming up with a design or implemented design that's not correct is basically useless. So that's why proving the correctness of your design will be crucially uh, important. So that's uh, the main topic for uh, the final lecture. Let's now first of all look at the uh, learning objectives and then we'll go on to the uh, entire lecture. Number one, we will study some motivating examples about program correctness. I'll give you some example programs and just give me your intuition about whether it should be correct or not. And number two, we'll introduce to you the notion about whole triple. So it's a way to really turn your program, which is written in some imperative language, like iPhone, Java, or Python, uh, any language. And then whole triple has a way to really turn your uh, empirical program into a Boolean predicates for which you can simply prove whether that's a predicate, uh, it's a tautology or not, right? Either prove it or disprove it. And number three, in order to really uh, uh, prove the uh, whole triple uh, effectively, we have to consider the notion of the weakest precondition. We talk about a no the notion of a predicate being either weaker or stronger relative to another one. So we want to think about what would be the weakest precondition that cannot be weaker anymore Otherwise, uh, your program is going to be incorrect. So that's kind of the idea we're going to play with, but we'll get to the details uh, once we get there. Okay, number four, uh, we are going to give you a calculus about calculating WP, the weakest precondition. Given an arbitrary program, how you can actually calculate the weakest precondition for that in order to establish its post condition. We'll also get to the details. Number five, we're, once we learn about all the uh, basic programming constructs for assignments, uh, if conditional and also sequential composition. We're going to talk about loops, which is in general very hard to get because you can have uh, have many uh, uh, subtle mistakes. So we'll talk about two contracts for the loops. One about class uh, loop invariance, the other one about loop variance. For those of you who, who might be taking 3101 who, or who have taken 3101, you may have been exposed to these two concepts already. But for this course, we don't really assume you know, know about the two concepts I'll teach you from scratch and give you some examples to uh, strengthen your understanding. So number six, once we learn about a contract for the loops, we are going to uh, talk about how you can prove the correctness of a loop that's properly equipped with contracts. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, outline for uh, this uh, lecture here. It's going to be a three hour lecture. So stay tuned and then we'll speak about each uh, detail uh, for you. All right, so the first one here is just the background. So this, uh, the first three slides were already covered in the previous lecture about subcontracting, but they're somehow relevant about the background of a predicate being strong or weak, and also about the uh, the uh, precondition and also postcondition being weak or strong. So I'm just going to skip the first three slides. We have went, uh, gone over them already previously. You can just read them, uh, read them quickly, just to brush up your memory about predicates. Okay, so I'm just going to skip the first three slides. It's just a complete repetition of uh, the previous subcontracting lecture. So we have to go to number four over here. So that'll be our first motivating example for program correctness. So before giving you a formal uh, introduction to program correctness, are you able to see intuitively whether this program here should be correct? Okay, look at this example here. We got attributes, uh, we got a class, we got a attributes and also we got a command which got precondition, implementation and postcondition. Let's see intuitively if this should be correct. So pause the video and think about it. All right, assuming that you have thought about it. So let's now go over this example in detail. Let's now clarify what we know already about the terminology. Let's talk about specification versus implementation. Uh, let's get it right. So you can see over here, given any routine, so we got uh, the precondition being part of the specification and the other part would just be the post condition. So these two parts are what we call specification. And we spoke about this uh, terminology already uh, from day one of the uh, semester. So these two uh, Boolean predicates over here is called the specification. And on the other hand, 
uh, what you learned before this course is mainly about implementation, right? You don't you don't really have the notion about contracts uh, before studying this course. Uh, but uh, for that, uh, whenever you want to implement something, you want to implement as efficiently as possible. So this part over here is so called the uh, implementation. That's between the uh, within the do uh, block. So this part over here is the implementation. Okay, so now we got these two uh, different notions over here, specification versus implementation. And now what we want to do is we want to define what it means for a software or a program to be correct. So let's now define that. Okay, so we talk about correctness of program. And uh, let me point out, first of all, whenever you talk about correctness, it's really relative. It's not really absolute. You cannot really say a program is absolutely correct. Okay, You can only say it's relatively correct. So what is relative uh, to what? That's uh, what I want to clarify. But let me just write it down first. So what does it really mean uh, for a piece of program to be correct? That means the implementation satisfies the specification. I'll just say spec for short. So you can think about uh, the implementation that we talk about over here must satisfy the uh, specification over here, specification. You must satisfy. So you can think about the correctness is relative to what specification you're given or what kind of contract you're writing for both the precondition and postcondition. So if somehow you simply just didn't write your contracts appropriately, maybe for example, if somehow your precondition is uh, simply just too weak, meaning that it allows some invalid values that should not be allowed. In that case, uh, your program wouldn't be correct. Okay, just one example. And now let's now uh, talk about more specifically how you can determine if your uh, piece of software is actually correct. So let's write it out. So we want to, we want to say given uh, valid inputs. So what do I really mean by valid input? You will be uh, any uh, of course in this particular case, you can even though we don't really have any uh, parameters over here, we don't. However, because uh, the precondition over here is really checking the value for the attributes right now. So you can think about i is implicitly one of the input values for this increment by nine command. That's how you can think of it. So given valid inputs, which satisfied uh, the precondition. So which satisfies, satisfying uh, the precondition. Okay. Now, once we know that the precondition is actually satisfied, we're going to execute the implementation. And uh, there are two things we gotta watch out for. Number one, this part, uh, this particular fragment of code must terminate. Of course, in this case, it's only a single variable assignment is guaranteed to terminate. So the first issue is not an issue really. But in general, if you got a loop, in that case, termination would be an issue. Okay, so issue number one about termination. Number two, upon the termination of uh, the implementation, you want to make sure the post states is going to satisfy the post condition. So these are the two issues. Okay, so now we want to say, uh, given uh, given valid input satisfying the precondition, executing the implementation. Well, okay, so here we got to talk about the two issues I just mentioned. Number one, terminates. Okay, and number two, assuming that it will terminate, so upon termination, upon termination, the post condition is satisfied. You might be wondering, what about the class invariance? Remember what we spoke about before. If there's any class invariance over here, you can think about it as if the invariance was declared as 
the post condition for every routine. So you can think about the post condition over here is also including the class invariance implicitly. You can think it, uh, think that way. All right. So that's about uh, this uh, definition here about uh, program correctness. So here we talk about satisfying the precondition and also upon termination, you should also satisfy the post condition. And termination is really something that's important. It may not be an issue in the uh, in the absence of loop, but once we introduce the loop into our program syntax, in that case, you have to worry about uh, termination. That's something we'll speak about uh, in the second half of this lecture. And then when you execute the implementation, so that's uh, really the implementation we talk about, all right? Okay, so that's about the definition, uh, which is really important to really get it clear uh, up front. So now, is this particular program correct? Okay, let me just, uh, before I tell you the answer, you might be very keen to find out the answer. Let me just say one more thing. When we say the precondition over here is simply to say the implicit input i over here is strictly larger than three, meaning that what would be the uh, set of, value, uh, set of uh, valid input values? It could be i could be equal to four, it could be equal to five, uh, six, seven, and etc. all the way to maybe the maximum integer that's uh, allowed by your computer architecture. So now, given this, do you think the program is correct? Are we actually going to actually satisfy uh, one and two? So for this particular example, as I said, since we don't have any loops, so one is always satisfied, so we don't have to worry about one. What about two? Is there any allowable input value, well, any input value that will be allowed by the precondition, but once the implementation is executed and terminated, the post condition may not be satisfied, right? That's kind of the uh, direction I would like, you, uh, like to lead you to. Maybe that's something you already uh, have found out yourself intuitively. So now it turns out this particular input value over here is problematic. Let's see why. Let's see uh, over here if I have number four. If number four is actually passed as input, four is larger than three, so precondition will be satisfied. And then it's going to be i is assigned to 4 plus 9, which will give us 13. So that's kind of the uh, post state value for i. And now if you try to evaluate 13 larger than 13, it's going to be false. So we actually get a post condition violation. Okay, and then we can make the con conclusion that this program is not correct. is uh, not correct. All right, and then uh, let's now uh, dig in a little bit uh, deeper. So what's really the cause of problem over here? So the problem really is somehow this input value should have been forbidden, uh, should have been considered as causing a precondition violation. We should have we should have blamed the clients on passing this particular input value for because according to our uh, design for the implementation and also the post condition. Having this is simply not should not be allowed in the first place. Okay, so now, in other words, is the current pre uh, is the current precondition over here is it said to be too weak or too strong? Right, you want to brush up. That's why I included the previous uh, three slides about weak weak versus strong for the practice. Right. Okay, so now finally, I'm just going to. Uh, Let's point out one more thing. Okay, so now you want to say the precondition, the precondition, uh, specifically i larger than three, is too weak. Meaning that the satisfying value set over here for that precondition uh, set i larger than three, it simply includes uh, four, five, six, seven, all the way to the maximum. And somehow this value over here should not be included. It should not be, right? Uh, you should think about that one should have been excluded. It's too weak. Uh, four is actually allowed. And four itself is actually going to trigger the post condition violation, all right? Uh, how can we fix this, okay? Uh, indeed, there are two ways to fix this. I will just mention, uh, I'll mention both of them. The obvious way to uh, fix this, uh, following the logic uh, logic of thoughts over here, uh, in, because the uh, precondition is actually too weak, so why don't we make it a little bit stronger? So fix number one. 
fix number one, we can simply say rather than making this so weak, we can make it a little bit stronger. We can say we want to make it stronger so that the resulting uh, satisfying uh, value set is just going to be a proper subset like this. In that case, you will only include five, six, and seven. In that case, what would uh, what would be this uh, what would this predicate be? In that case, you will be, for example, i larger than four. So that would be one way to fix it. So I just say i larger than four. So this will be a stronger precondition. So that'll be fix number one. Fix number two. Let's say we don't really want to change the precondition. Maybe, if, uh, maybe as far as the requirements for your specific application is concerned, you believe we should always allow four, five, six, seven. All right. If you believe that's the case, so in that case, if the implementation also needs to be uh, the case because it's really called increment uh, by nine, I don't see any way around implementing it. So now another way to fix it is why don't we make the uh, post condition over here uh, weaker? So rather than saying i should be larger than 13, right? Okay, so now we can uh, fix number two. We can, uh, we can the post condition. How do we make it uh, weak, uh, weaker? In the sense that we should also allow the output value to be not just uh, uh, not uh, so you can see currently the smallest value that can be allowed by the post condition will be uh, like a 14, 15, and also 16, right? But now we should also allow in the case where four is actually taken as input, it will be 13. So 13 should be allowed as well. So in that case, we can just make it maybe i larger than 12. So this will be fix number two, right? Let me make it very clear to you. You can see fix number two, we're going to weaken the post condition. In that case, this will be the result. If you, you can either do the pink one, or uh, if you go back to the original uh, precondition over here, you can see fix number one over here. So let me just uh, say, say that uh, also here. So I, when we change it to i larger than four, it's really to strengthen the precondition. Strengthen the precondition. You can see either we strengthen the precondition or weaken the post condition. Either way, you don't do both. Okay, let me just use a different color. So fix number one is about strengthen the precondition, right? And then in that case, it's going to be i larger than four, right? So we got either fix one or fix two. Choose either one, but not both. All right, so that's about a very thorough discussion about this particular example. So how should you study this particular example with the notes? Number one, you want to review uh, this notion about the correctness of the program being relative. And then you want to uh, study these two criteria about uh, whenever um, a program is given, so how can you judge to see whether it should be correct conceptually? So given the precondition, uh, execute the implementation, and you should really terminate and satisfy the post condition. And now going back to this particular example over here, if you want to judge, judge, uh, judge to say the precondition uh, is actually too weak, that could be one cause for the problem. Or you can say the post condition is maybe too strong, that can be another cause of the problem. But uh, usually I'll make the context clear. Typically, we simply just want to fix the implementation and also fix the post condition. These two shouldn't uh, change. If given that these two do, uh, are simply fixed, what should be the corresponding change for the precondition? That's uh, that's typically what I will make a uh, make it clear in the context. All right, so study this uh, example very carefully, and then we'll move on to the second one. All right, so let's go back to the slides. Okay, so that's exactly the short answer to uh, this particular ex uh, first exercise, but my discussion on the, iP on the iPad is actually much longer. So you may want to follow through the discussion. Okay, let's now go on to the second one. So now, again, intuitively, do you, f uh, do you see this program over here uh, correct or incorrect? Think about it and pause the video.